Welcome to another episode on magnetic fields and last time we saw how to not define a magnetic field. We saw that we cannot define the magnetic field the same way we do that for the electric field for the reasons that you cannot separate a monopole. You don't have something called as a north pole or a south pole alone. They always a dipole together and because of that we were in trouble. So how do we define the strength of a magnetic field? Well it turns out that magnetic fields do affect charges electric charges okay that's that's important because that's going to be the whole idea behind uh, defin defining the magnetic field so this man called as lawrence was the one who worked out this in detail but the main idea that we're going to be using in this video is that magnetic fields put force on moving charges and i'm talking about this electric charges all right is the same electric charges that you are used to that's right even though it's a magnetic field which i think you know in, in intuitively ways we would say it affects only magnets turns out they can also affect electric charges amazing isn't it all right so let's investigate this force and then let's see how we can define our magnetic field so here is our magnetic field so let's move this thing a little bit down all right so here is my magnetic field and we represent magnetic field with b and we don't even know what it is right now okay so if i were to tell you that magnetic field is a hundred then you are as lost as I am, or <laughs> I am as lost as you are, because we have no idea what the units are, so that 100 doesn't mean anything to me as of now, but by the end of this video, hopefully it should mean something, all right? So imagine we have a uniform magnetic field. Our goal is to find out what does that even mean? So what Lorenz does is that he tries to figure out how does a magnetic field affect a charge? So what we're gonna do is we're gonna put a charge over there. So here's our charge, okay? So we are having a positive charge, and our positive charge is plus Q and it's moving with some velocity V with some random axis over here uh, and it's making an angle theta with some random axis over here. So the question is what would happen if we were to take this charge and put it in this magnetic field? What would happen? Well, Lorentz finds out that that charge is going to now experience a force, not an electric force, but a magnetic force. So let's write down his findings. According to him, the magnetic force Fb, so B for magnetism, turns out to be equal to vectorial, it's a vector equation, Q times V cross B. So if you were to look at the magnetic force in magnitude only, so if you were to look at this magnitude, then we have to take the magnitude of V cross B, well that is just V B times sine theta, where theta is this angle, the angle between velocity vector V and the magnetic field vector B. So that is the expression for the Lorentz force, the force on a charge due to a magnetic field. And I want you to, I want you to keep at the back of your head, I want you to keep thinking about the electric force that we have discussed for quite a while now. The electric force, so I'm gonna call it as Fe, we have seen that force Fe is just uh, is just Q times E, all right? So we're gonna compare this force and see how different it is from the electric force. The first major difference that you should notice between the electric force and the magnetic force is that the magnetic force depends on the velocity. That means if the, so let's see, look at the magnitude. I think magnitude will make more sense. Notice that if velocity is zero, the force would be zero. In other words, magnetic force or magnetic fields, or I'm just gonna call them as B fields. B fields don't affect stationary charges, okay? Affect stationary charges. And that's very weird. And if you don't find, I mean, don't, if you don't understand why that is weird, don't worry, I'm going to make a whole new episode, a whole episode on that, trying to understand why this dependence on velocity is very weird. I mean, you usually don't want a force to depend on velocity. If you understand Newton's laws and frames of references, maybe you will know what I'm talking about. But anyways, we'll get back to that in detail later on. So that's one big difference you see between the electric force and the magnetic force. Okay, and the second thing is magnetic force not only depends on the speed, but it also depends on the direction of motion. I mean, look, there's a sine theta out there, which tells us that if the velocity is parallel to the magnetic field, 
That means even if the charge is moving, so you know, let's go that bit. Ah, crap. All right, so even if the charge is in motion, if that charge were to move parallel to the magnetic field or even anti-parallel, then the velocity would be, uh, the force would be zero, okay? In this case, the force would be zero. That's what this thing is telling us. Therefore, not only should our charge be moving, but it also has to make an angle with respect to the magnetic field. If it doesn't do that, then there's going to be no force. And another thing we understand because of this is that the force is maximum when the charge is moving perpendicular. You can see over here, right? So let's write that down somewhere over here. So we can notice that this also tells us one more thing that the force, uh, force is maximum when velocity is perpendicular to the magnetic field. Okay. So that's one so that's one big difference between magnetic force and electric force. Magnetic force is velocity dependent. But there's another major difference between electric and magnetic force. Electric force is always in the same direction or in the opposite or electric force is always parallel to the electric field whereas <laughs> magnetic force is always perpendicular to the magnetic field. Do you see that? That is amazing. You know, we're gonna we're gonna make a new another episode where we're gonna work out the differences between magnetic field, magnetic forces, and electric forces. But anyways, I want to mention that. But anyways, now that we have defined what our magnetic force looks like, it's time to define our magnetic field. So I'm gonna take this equation and I'm gonna define what magnetic field is. So from that equation, magnetic field B can be written as the magnitude of the force. So I'm just gonna write that F of B. I'm gonna get rid of that vector signs and modulus and everything magnitude of the force divided by q v times sine theta and that's the definition of the magnetic field okay so how are we going to put this i mean how are we going to understand that well to understand let's put let's assume q to be plus one coulomb let's assume v to be one meter per second and let's assume theta to be 90 degrees. And then you can understand that the denominator just becomes one. You see that? And therefore, B now becomes equal to F of B. So this tells us that the magnetic field B is the force per unit charge or unit positive charge moving at unit speed, you need a unit speed, moving at unit speed perpendicular to the field. And that is the definition of the magnetic field strength. If I told you magnetic field strength is say 100, if I told you it was 100, what it means is that if you had a coulomb moving perpendicular to the magnetic field with unit speed, a meter per second, then that coulomb would experience a force of 100 newtons. That's the meaning of the magnetic field. I hope that makes sense to you. And so the unit of the magnetic field from this just turns out to be newtons divided by coulomb. Then you have a meter per second. So the next second comes on top. And notice this is a very ugly unit. I mean, no one's going to call this as Newton second per coulomb meter. No one's going to do that. Instead, we're going to call that thing as a Tesla. So T for Tesla. Tesla was electromagnetism. He's the main man behind the AC that we all get to enjoy today. But anyways, magnetic field is named after him. So let's go back. And so I hope now you understand what is the meaning of say magnetic field being 100 Tesla. If I told you that the magnetic field at some point is 100 Tesla, it just means that if you shoot a coulomb. So here, if you take a coulomb, not just any positive charge, take a one coulomb positive charge over here and you shoot this guy perpendicular. You know, you can choose it. You can choose any perpendicular direction, but you shoot that guy perpendicular at a speed of one meter per second, then this fellow is going to experience a force of 100 newtons. That's what a magnetic field means and that's the definition. All right, so I hope I hope was able to give you some intuition behind what magnetic fields are and the idea behind the Lorentz force. So this guy is the Lorentz force. All right, so that's all for today. I'll see you next time. Stay tuned.